First up, the blue team. So civil 3D and storm sewer analysis, what do they actually have intel? So for the guys that still doesn't know what storm and sewer analysis actually is, let me just elaborate a little bit. So normally if you install civil 3D on its own, it actually comes with storm sewer analysis. So it's basically an, an additional package which is already included into the civil 3D. Now what in the storm sewer analysis actually happens is basically you export all of your pipes into the SSA and do your actual analysis. So how does that entire workflow actually look like? So for the gravity pipe networks, we need to firstly manually model, model the pipe networks using civil 3D tools. Now, the one key de defect about this, that the pipe networks, the catalogs that actually comes with it is not South African standard based, which is very problematic because you need to make sure that these things are as accurate as possible to the real life scenario. Then what I need to do is before I can send all of this data to SSA, they need a piping migration. Now, this is performed by hand inside of civil 3D settings, tap for both pipes and for structures. So you literally need to go down and literally assign each element to a specific migration. For example, a pipe is a pipe, a pipe an inlet is an inlet, a manhole is a manhole, junction is a junction. It's a very tedious process. But that's how we used to do it in the old days. But basically, the next step then after this, the catchments and the pipe networks must be submitted separately into SSA in a manual manner. When I speak about manual manner, it's basically you send the pipe networks as an SDM file, as well as the catchment actually comes in as a LAN XML. So you need to export both of those elements to SSA. There's not a one click and it's actually there. You need to export them separately. Then for the project and analysis options, they need to be set up inside of this SSA itself. So the system can be analyzed and the pipe sizes can be changed inside of SSA. But here comes the kicker. If I'm exporting data back to Civil 3D, it must be done manually. This just adds the pipe sizes to Civil 3D. So basically it will update the size of your pipe if, and I say with a big if, if you set up the piping migration the correct way, because as you send it in, there's a migration. If you send it back, it also has a migration. So normally 99% of the time, it's sometimes much easier just to swap out the parts inside of Civil 3D than rather trying to export and import these elements, import it back into Civil 3D. Then the most critical thing of the entire designs, which I personally do not enjoy, is the fact it lacks the design data in our own section. So you need to actually go and manually create these elements using normal AutoCAD text, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what is the most, I can't, ex I can't explain it how frustrating it is. Basically, because that's what we need to show in our long section for government and our agencies and so on and so forth. I need to know what's the velocity. I need to know what's the discharge so I can put it into my long section. Then here comes the non another brainer. If the model has been changed inside of Civil 3D, this entire workflow needs to be modified from scratch. So you need to import again, redo your analysis, change the pipe, go back to Civil 3D, bring them in. Then you need to go and actually add the text. It's, it's crazy. So just to illustrate a little bit better, I'm just gonna play a quick video. So if you actually go and export now yet again, the long tedious process of the, the pipe networks as well as the catchment. So the first things first, it will bring in these catchment areas is this shaded area as well as it defines them for each catchment and the pipe networks. Now, the following step is after you've imported all of your elements, you need to go to your project options where you can specify what type of analysis you do. So I'm not gonna go into technical depth around this, but basically you specify what time of concentration you want, as well as you can actually predefine the flow length, which is actually your longest path on a certain area of an attachment. So then you can specify if those elements are adequate and to do that. So after you set up the project manager and what type of analysis you're doing, you need to go to each individual element in the sub catchment areas. 
So if you go select, for example, this first subcatchment area, you can go define yet again, it's flow length. Now, sometimes you can do this manually because you need to link it to which, in, to which inlet, as well as you can specify the roughness coefficients, basically for that specific material or specific uh, catchment, which has contained certain criteria, you can actually go define the roughness coefficients for them. Now, it actually does work, calculate the weighted coefficients, and you need to also specify the outlet node. So which KI is this going to, or which inlet is it gonna go flow to? So it depends on whatever type of scenario you're using. Now, the tedious part is about this, you need to do this for every single one of them. And remember, if there's updates that's required, it basically will make you do all of the steps over and over and over again. So basically, you need to go define every set area again with the roughness of coefficient. Now, sometimes if you did copy it over, it doesn't read it. So you need to actually go still manually change these elements inside. So you need to link it to the, in, to the actual inlet. Yet again, just to show one more time, if you go to the actual paste, you can see it sometimes does not pick it up. So I need to manually go and change these elements and make sure the inlet selection is correct. You can do a little bit of adjustments afterwards when you've already set this up, but the most critical part is you need to link it to your system. Otherwise, it's not gonna calculate any flow into your catchment areas. Then finally, I'm gonna just do the last few, jump a bit. So after you've now actually added all of your catchment areas and linked them to your junctions, you need to go specify your idea of curve for the specific designs criteria. Now you can go and do that in your applications options, and then you can start specifying, for example, what time of analysis you want to run, as well as the storm sewer, what's your return period for what type of design you're doing. Then you can actually perform the analysis after that. So basically it will work out all of that discharge onto your inlets and inside of your inlets, you can actually go and see the results inside of your long section. Now there is a profile plot function inside of SSA that actually allows you to go and view all of this data and you can see it gives you all of that information. You can actually go play an output animation, which we'll do a bit later, but basically it actually showcases all of your design details inside of that profile view. So basically most of that hard work has already been done. So the next step is basically let's try and flood this entire scenario, let's say one in 50 year rainfall intensity and I rerun the analysis. So what I want to do is I want to flood this entire system and as you can see it actually a highlight. So it shows case that the pipes are probably flooded in my case and I can actually go and just make sure that these pipes are according to standard. Now in my case if I do play this along you can see it actually dictates where I've got full fully full manholes as well as when my pipe is fully underwater. So you can actually go and look and, and animate this even more. And it actually does provide all of the nice details. That's the beauty actually about this. They actually do have all of the details and then you can actually go redefine your pipe sizes. Now the pipe sizes, you literally need to select per pipe to change the pipe sizes, diameters, and then you can rerun the analysis. So as soon as you do that, you can see the modification has been changed and I need to go and make sure the last two is also designed. So you do that manually one pipe at a time which is a little bit tedious on my end because you can think if you've got a big stormwater network how long this is going to take so as soon as i've done all of that hard work i can just confirm that all of these pipes are properly designed and there's no flooding or fully discharge then if i want to export this you can actually either export it as an stm file or if you want to export the other elements, you can also put it as a land XML. So that's basically a very long process of how to design these things. And like I said, you can actually animate it back into exactly what's happening inside of your network. Now, I personally, I love this type of network, but the only problem is I need to export these things back to Civil 3D. And that's where the problem comes in. So as soon as I sometimes go into Civil 3D and I export the pipe sizes back to it, I still don't get my actual data inside of my long section. So it kind of beats the point of basically going that route. Then finally, we've got 
for the pressure pipe networks for the bulk water overview. So I'm going to quickly discuss about that. So yet again, we need to manually build the pipe networks inside of civil 3D tools. The pressure network does not contain a catalog for the structures and pipe, which is specific to our South African standards. So you need to go create these catalogs by hand. As well as for the design and analysis, it's typically carried out in other software packages, like, namely EPANET. So that's one of the downfalls when the previous civil engineering. There is pressure networks of capabilities inside of civil 3D, but the analysis part is completely removed. So just to give you guys an illustration, this is basically a typical type of pipe catalog that's actually inside of the normal civil 3D. As well as I mentioned, you need to go to EPANET to actually do your analysis. So that's just a quick overview of those ones. And now we can move on to the red team. So the red team consists of civil 3D and demo tech IDAS. And let's have a look how this is actually working. So first things first, the gravity pipe networks. So the stormwater overview is basically, yet again, we need to manually model the pipe networks using civil 3D, or we can actually use the automated pipe networks using DevoTech IDAS. As well as the next step is DevoTech IDAS has established all of the catalogs for pipes and structures, which is already in compliance with our South African manufacturing standards for stormwater and sewer pipes and structures. So, Literally, you don't need to do all of this catalog buildup. It's already there at your convenience. Then for the network design and analysis, it can be carried out with inside Civil 3D without exporting anything. And I mean anything. The pipe size can be modified within Devotech IDAS wizard and the design, design data is replicated in the profile band. For example, the velocity of discharge. And that's what I want. I want to do less amount of effort so my accuracy is much more up on to point because these things are very critical. When the model has been updated to Civil 3D, you can simply reanalyze the system and just verify the, if, if it follows the design specification. So if I do do small little adjustments on my layout, it actually just goes back to the analysis. I can just check and bump your own goal, there you go. There are different import and export options available to share your designs with other software packages using DevoTech IDA. So if you are collaborating with other engineers, you have the capabilities to export. So just a quick demonstration. Now, I am not going to dictate exactly how I created the stormwater networks. I'm going to put that emphasis more on the bulk water because there's a lot of guys that actually want to see that. So for now, I'm going to just start off explaining for a normal stormwater management inside of Civil 3D, and I'm going to use my DevoTech IDAS commands. Now, DevoTech IDAS has nice pipe design capabilities to actually create them as well as to do analysis. If I go and say, for example, create, this wizard actually creates the pipe networks, and that's what I've used to create these elements inside of Civil 3D. So if I zoom into it, you can see there are very nicely defined structures and that's an actual 20s KI. So where does this come from? Now, basically where this actually comes from is inside of my settings tab, we've got our parts list and these parts list, we actually contains all of our elements. Now, these parts lists are included into our DevoTech IDAS templates. So if you purchase the software or you come for our training here at Modern Art AEC, we provide you with these template. So just to showcase to you, there are the actual South African standard structures. There's a curve inlet for JR as well as for 20. So you can see for 20, there's a few examples for the actual catchment links as well. We have also got Inclineni as well as the curve inlets and outlets for dummies and all those elements. So basically we've done all of the hard work for you. So you actually have access to all of these structures. Now, the one thing you need to, need to specify is just to make sure the outfalls are already pre-designed, as well as I've already done the long section just to model it in profile view. So all that's actually still requires is you can use the grade pipes and adjust inverts to assist you with this for the regrading of these pipes. There's also a nice command for regrading pipes. The old fashioned way is you literally need to go select these elements and do it by the grip, which is very tedious. That's why DevoTech IDAS has a very nice tool. So, 
after you specify those elements, you need to go and define the catchment areas. So you need to literally create the catchment areas and that will actually be been brought into my manager. Now, how does the analysis basically work? If I go to my stormwater manager, and inside of the stormwater manager, it actually works as follows. So as soon as I do that, it picks up the entire network. And as you can see, yet again, this is all in Civil 3D. If I go to my structures and inlets, basically it indicates all of my inlets. And if I add junctions, outfalls, it picks up the outfalls, as well as you have the ability to add pumps, storage units, and so on and so forth. If I go to conduits, it's basically my pipes. So it picks up all of my pipes, as well as the pipe sizes. And I need to go specify the quickness coefficient for these elements. So let's just make this bigger. As well as it'll bring in already all of my catchments. So it picks up all of the catchments itself. So how does this entire catchment be defined? So you select the catchment first, and then you need to go to the catchment side properties to define its details. For example, if you go to the catchment side properties, you can specify what type of method you're using, the hydrology method type, if it's rational or if or swim, as well as what's the rational time of concentration method you're using. Is it Kirby or Kirbyish? So then you can specify if it's a rational minimum allowed time of concentration, as well as your ascending limb multiplier, rescinding limb multiplier, and so on and so forth. As well as the IDN curve, you can go and specify which is already in there, but you can generate your own one if you want to. So you have that capability, as well as defining which rational IDF curve return period you want to analyze this catchment for. Then the second element which you start to need to go define is the actual catchment properties to define the runoff coefficients for them. So you still have the ability to switch the inlet nodes as well from here, as well as the roughness coefficient, you can go specify the external roughness coefficient. If you've got an internal roughness coefficient or a Kirby roughness coefficient, depends on whatever you're using. But you also have a composite runoff coefficient, which I also did similarly in SSA. So let's say, for example, you want to specify 80% is grassway and 20% is basically paving or road. So you can go and define those elements and it will also create a weighted coefficient for you. So if this is a bit tedious, you can also go and specify more details a bit later on, as well as it brings in the idea of curves to tell you exactly what that intensity is. So you can go define all of those elements. And then, like I said, you could also then specify the inlets because you can either select this manually or you can say search for automatically. So if it is inside there, it will actually pick it up. As well as the average slopes, you need to go to find the longest path. Now, what you can do is you can actually draw these polylines beforehand, automate selective flow path, or you can say draw flow path polyline. Now, as soon as you do this, it actually picks up the average slope along that entire area and it does the calculations for you. It specifies the length the time of concentration, and then it works out your intensity. The roughness coefficients can also be overrides. So just to show you, I've actually just done that one, but you can do overrides for roughness coefficients. So this is actually defined inside of the catchment properties and you need to do this for the entire catchment, but you can do a quick select and do a quick override, for example. So if you say fill selected elements, let me just say override and do that again and say fill values and selected parcels, it specifies for all of the reference coefficients, I can simply do that. So as you can see, it adds all of those elements and it works out the discharge over that entire catchment areas, which is actually gonna flow into your inlets at the end of the day. So you have that capabilities to do that. Now the next step is the design criteria. How are you gonna design your piping system? Are you using rational or FR swim? As well as what the routing module is using, dynamic wave, kinematic wave, or steady flow. You can actually go to find them as well as how long you want to run this analysis. You also have got dynamic wave settings if you specify the dynamic wave system as well as pipe design rules. So you can preliminary set up design rules so that your network is being designed accordingly to the minimum pipe cover, the slopes, the depths, and so on and so forth, as well as the potential flow depth. So some in industries actually say 75%, some of them say 80% depends on which institute you are designing for. So you can set up all of those settings still inside of Civil 3D and demo the guidance. I did not import or export anything yet. Now, after I've actually done all of the hard work, I can run the analysis. So as soon as I run the analysis, you can see I get a little indication. There's a little bit of warning. So let me just have a look. So inside, I can have a look and to see my pipe sizing. So it tells me the minimum diameter for these pipes are this one, as well as it will tell me the design flow in this 
velocity and discharge. So it gives you warnings if you go specify exactly those elements. You can always go check for the maximum flow Q and maximum flow depth is that your pipes is not being flooded. So normally, is it percentage wise, you can actually go and have a look to see if your entire areas are being flooded or not. So these are the criteria you can actually go and have a look at. Now, what about if I want to swap a pipe? If I select a pipe, I can actually do it inside individually if I want to select one. But the beauty about this, I need to reanalyze it and I can go and check my velocities and my discharge just to make sure it's still up to standard. But if I want to swap multiple, this is this nice little button that says apply minimal pipe sizes to all of them. So I select all of the pipes I want and I swap them to the one I'm looking for. So there are different types of sizes. So you can select whatever type you want, as well as you can go define which ones are still available in South Africa or not, because some of them are discontinued. But you have that option to go crazy and select any type. Now, as soon as I do that, it actually swaps all of the parts already. If I rerun the analysis, they're actually updated. Now, if you do update and update these data, it actually will bring it into your civil 3D automatically. You also have a nice little view that actually indicates to you your analysis and velocities, as you can see. So it looks very similar to EPA, EPANET, but basically it tells you all of your velocities, your head, your total inflow you can go to find. If I go to reports, you actually have more functionality to see your result. So you can go to find if you want to see total inflow, lateral inflow, velocities and such. And you can also go select elements. For example, if you want to see the outfalls, or certain pipes. If you want to see the flow velocity in pipes, you can select one pipe or multiple pipes and compare how these velocities are actually running inside of your pipes. So this is also a very nice tool. If I go to more details, you can actually go define detail formats, which you can actually save to an Excel file, as well as the, the summary of all of your pipe systems, which is the minimum and the maximum and the total. You also have got the EPA swim type of report. You can actually go and have a look and inspect as well as the normal report actually is the one that also dictates all of those elements to you. And this report you can actually export to Microsoft um, software packages, for example, Excel or documentation. As well as quantities, you can actually go define your quantities. You can export the quantities and you can actually go and save those for future reference. As well as the volumes for the bedding, it actually does the bedding class, the total excavation, the bedding cradle, and a compact selected for blanket, as well as the refill, and it gives you nice little summaries of the pipe links, as well as the structure depth summary. So you have all of these capabilities inside of Civil 3D and Devotech items. As well as you can import and export these data, especially if you want to share it with some other clients as well. You also have got advanced rename settings. You can add curve patterns and rain gauges as well as this nice little function to draw profile views in the entire network. I used for this one specifically because it saves you a lot of time. Rather than doing it the manual way, we literally need to create one by one. After I set all of it, I can say update the part data inside of my model and say OK. And now if I'm back in Civil 3D, I can simply go and navigate to the elements. So let's see if those pipes are actually been updated. I think this is pipe 10. We're looking specifically for pipe one because I actually swapped that pipe. So the right way to find new pipes actually is if I go to my properties tab on the network stormwater pipes, then I can go and redefine them. There's the one. It says actually 600 millimeters, but let's say right click and select. There's my pipe number one. So if I go to its properties, it also says it already automatically swaps that pipe for you. So you don't need to do that anymore. As well as in my long section, my energy grade line and my horizontality grade line actually also has been updated. So it's actually presented. As well as in my log chains, you can see it adds the 600 millimeters details. And then the most important part, the hydraulics. So it tells you the hydraulics for that specific design and velocities that is required. So as well as if you want to import and export these elements, you can simply export it either to civil designer, CSV files, INP, Technocat, water, in, import to Gino, or Technocat from to a water. So you have got all of that capabilities already inside of Civil 3D and Devotech items. 